Hi folks! In the following I want to show you a realistic practical application of the UV CAN UART tunnels for our autopilot. And in a previous video I was demonstrating this feature already to you. However, in this case I was using muffling messages. And this in my opinion is not a very realistic use case. What is more practical and realistic is to use a GPS unit via the CAN bus and to use a storm gimbal controller via the CAN bus. Now, before that, let's briefly go into the setup. So that's obviously my copter. It has two GPS units. So this GPS unit is connected to serial three as usual. And the second uh, GPS module is the one which we are going to connect via the CAN bus. So this is the CAN bus. It's going to this uh, thing here. You see there are a lot of nodes. And there's one dangling cable here. And this one is the one which is going to go to the storm gimbal controller. And then there's a second additional cable, which is going to my UC4H SL CAN adapter. What you also can see that at the moment, the CAN bus is not connected to the flight controller. And one reason for that is that this GPS module I, ha I had reset to the default setting before I started this video. And the reason for that is that I want to show to you um, that once we connect it to autopilot, that autopilot will go through its autobounding uh, mechanism trying to find this GPS model and to set it up correctly. And all this is going via the CAN bus. So this should demonstrate to you that via the CAN bus, not only the serial messages are tr transmitted, but also that this implementation handles the baud rate changes correctly. Okay. So I connect the battery. I connect the USB cable to the flight controller. We go to mission planner. Connect. Okay. And we, we can see already a lot of things happening. So the first thing is that this GPS module on seal number three has been detected. And now it also has been uh, yeah, put into action. We can see that there's a no fix here. A second thing you can notice is that there are a lot of GP, uh, UC4H nodes on the canvas. And the particular one of interest is now this GPS magnetometer one. It's this uh, node here which is connected to the uh, second GPS module. And it's working in a UART bridge mode. And that's shown here. So its node idea is 44. It's emitting uh, magnetic field messages. And that's the important part now that, that its Seward bridge is configured to the channel ID number 44. The baud rate is set to uh, 5760, which is the wrong one. So it also needs to be configured correctly automatically. You also can see that the debug is on, which means that there are some messages coming from this GPS magnetometer node, which uh, will carry some interesting information, as you will see in the next step. Let's go briefly through the configuration of the flight controller. So first, of course, in the CAN section, you can see that I have enabled the CAN bus property. I've also uh, enabled the ECs. And more, more important is going to the GPS section. So we have a dual setup. And here now, importantly, the safe configuration is as usual set to two, which means it will do the auto bounding and save the settings when into the gimbal con uh, into the GPS module. And then here you can note that both GPSs are configured to be number two. So this number two is uh, U blocks. So it's not number nine, which would correspond to a GPS U or we can unit. They are both set to UPLUX number two to the serial protocol. Okay, and then the serials, the first serials are as usual, set up as usual. Uh, so muffling, muffling, deactivated. And here the serial three is now uh, configured to be protocol number five, corresponding to a GPS unit. So this would be the normal configuration. And what will be interesting in the following are the serials. So the serial tunnel zero is connected to 
channel ID 71, which is this is going to be the storm gimbal controller. And here the seal tunnel number one is set to a protocol of number five, which will be the second GPS unit. And it's going to be a channel ID number 44, which was exactly the channel ID of this uh, UART bridge here. Okay, so we can go on and connect uh, our our system, our CAN bus to the flight controller. So I will disconnect the mission planner. I will power down everything. And we've done all the settings. So I will connect the CAN bus now to the flight controller. So you see, it's now connected. And we power up everything again. So first the battery, then the USB cable, they go to Mission Planner and connect to Mission Planner and have to wait a certain moment, you know that. Now we want to watch what's going on here. So GPS number one has been detected. Now that's the interesting thing. GPS number two also has been detected as UPLUX. So it behaves like it would be connected to a serial port. However, it's via the CAN port now. It also has been configured to be set up to 115,000 bouts. And it has been found here and activated. And now there should be the configure. And now the settings have been also saved. Okay. We can uh, have a look here into our UC4H nodes. Now we can see that Ardu Pilot has appeared as, as it should be, the GPS and all the other nodes are still present. What is more interesting now is to look into this debug messages. So I stop that for a moment and take this, make this a bit better. So now we can see, okay, here you can see, oops, and here you can follow now what has been happened. So first the outbound rate was changed to 38,000, which was what was specified in by the mission planner parameters. And now we can see how, how the autopilot is doing the uh, autobouting. So it's first trying 115,000, then 4,000, 19,000, 38,000, uh, 57,000, 230,000, and then finally it tries 9,000. Which was is the baud rate for the GPS unit, so it realizes it, reconfigures it, and when finally it will save it. So this absolutely demonstrates to you that this implementation here via the CAN bus and then this tunnels works exactly like if it would be a serial connection. We also can have a look at the messages now. So we have quite a number of messages now, so it's roughly 700 frames per second. And there are all these messages as before. We are now only in addition a number of tunnel broadcast messages coming uh, from our GPS, second GPS node. Okay, so this demonstrates the practical application of a second GPS unit. Let's go on now to the Storm Gimbal Controller. And as next step, I need to connect the Storm Gimbal Controller. So I first connect the CAN bus here. So and okay, the storm is powered up. So you see it's connected here now. The parameters I have shown already to you. Um, oh, no, I did not. So we power up. So power up, let's connect the USB cable to the flight controller. Go to mission planner and connect to the flight controller. Now we can see what's going on here. Okay, so first, as regards of the GPS2, it's now immediately found. This is because it had been uh, configured correctly. And in addition, you, will s you see the storm uh, messages, which tells you that you have an established connection to the storm. And in particular, there is this this message that also the pass-through has been installed on serial number zero, which is on this USB port. Now, brief look on the parameters here, what you need to do in order to get this. 
So the GPSs are all the same. So what you have to do is go into the mount section and I've set here mount type to 83, which is the serial native uh, muffling mount. And then I've also set this pass through serial to number zero, which is the USB port on the flight controller. And then now you see that serial tunnel number zero uh, is set to 83, which is the protocol. Uh, so that's exactly uh, identical to what you would do if you would use any of, uh, any of the other seals. And now in addition you have to set the channel ID and the Storm Gimbal controller has the node ID 71 and it will use its channel ID the same number. Uh, so the channel ID also has to be set to 71 in order to communicate with the Storm. So here now you can see that the Storm indeed has appeared and it's on 70 number 1. Now an interesting feature to show is this, oh, we can watch also the messages first. So the data rate has been increased now, it's about 2000, uh, 1200 frames per second. And this is because uh, the Storm Gimbal controller really emits a number of messages to establish the communication. And we can demonstrate it. So we can try the pass-through. So we first of course have to disconnect from mess Mission Planner to get access to this COM17. Uh, then we can go here into COM17 and connect and you see that we can have access now to the Storm Gimbal controller. We also have the data here. Uh, so when I move the gimbal you can see that you can see it. Uh, and I want to emphasize to this so we, the, the connection now is via COM17 through this autopilot flight controller via the CAN bus to the Storm Gimbal controller. So that's, that's another demonstration of this feature. Um, we also can connect again to Mission Planner. Well, okay. And go into the status section and try to find the gimbal data, so it's here, uh, so it's here, this this cam point things, and when I move the gimbal, for example, the yaw axis, you can see that this data is, is arriving mission planner, is arriving mission planner. Okay, so what you have here now is a GPS, second GPS unit via the canvas and a storm gimbal controller, also via the canvas, and everything fully working. That's all I wanted to show you. Have fun.